And this is the Upper Room with Joe Kelly, and uh, we've been talking about having this very gifted singer, songwriter, and uh, she is in the studio right now all the way from California, the uh, Southern California area. Great CD, a self-titled CD, just came out the beginning of this year, and her name is Angelique, and we welcome her to the Upper Room. How you doing, Angelique? I'm fine, Joe. Thank you for having me. And, and thanks for the, the great record that uh, you released, and... Uh, when, when did uh, I know we'll get back to your, your early history in music, but mm-hmm. how about the, the songs, particularly on this record? When did you start working on that? Well, I started working on those. Some of the songs are actually about five and six years old, but most of the, uh, the majority of the album I started working on about two years ago okay. while, when I was in Japan. Oh, really? What yeah. took you to Japan? I was doing a, um, a gig there. Okay. I was doing a Motown tribute. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so during the tribute, uh, what what uh, songs were you you tackling during that show? I was tackling Hollywood. Oh, wow. okay, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I was tackling Hollywood and uh, Baby. Okay. Those are the two songs that I was writing while I was there. And you started off with uh, on the album Baby in Hollywood. Yes. And I I love your song writing the lyrics, especially <laughs> talking about Hollywood. Right. And uh, who who are the folks you work with uh, on the record? I know you have some co-writers that uh, on yeah. those tracks. Yes. Yeah. On on Baby, I actually work with a um, an old friend of mine by the name of Al Rublakava. And uh, he's worked with many, many artists mm-hmm. in the industry, um, Michael Cimbello, um Gustavo, I believe that's his name, Gustavo. Okay. And uh, David Snyder was the awesome. uh, gentleman so, so, right. yeah, that I wrote uh, Hollywood with, good uh, friend of mine. Uh, how, how do you uh, write with these, these musicians yourself? Um, what, what's the process of you working on your songs? The uh, process when I'm usually working with another um, songwriter is they'll give me a, a basic track mm-hmm. and um, it will just have chords. Okay. And then I will supply a melody and uh, the lyrics. Okay. Yeah. And it usually works out r- yeah. right away? Yeah. It, well, uh-huh. it, sometimes it works right. out. I mean, uh, sometimes they'll want to come back and make a couple of changes, but usually because I'm, I'm often the times the artist as well, <laughs> right. I get the last word. You get the last word, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's a very diverse record. And how, how about the selection of the songs and where you, where you put them in the CD, the mm-hmm. order? How, how does that go about with an album that, you know, so diverse in styles? Well, what I was trying to do was have a a certain vibe throughout mm-hmm. the songs, and uh, the first the first song is really kind of like the end of a journey because I'm talking about two people who are in love and the journey of that love from the beginning of the relationship until the end of the relationship, and will will they continue to be right. with each other? Um, and then as I go into the song, or I go into the rest of the album, I, I talk about new relationships and uh, things that can affect those relationships, like in Hollywood, when mm-hmm. I talk about right. um, just coming into uh, to a big city, wide-eyed, innocent, and all of the things that an innocent person can experience right, right. In, in Hollywood. Have things changed for the better out in Hollywood? Or, <laughs> or the same problems, right? Well, I, I think they're probably the same problems. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't see any changes and people coming there with hopes and aspirations and mm-hmm. sometimes those hopes and aspirations don't don't come true. Right. Mm-hmm. So so while we're uh, on the uh topic of Hollywood, um We'll get into the the song. We'll get into it right now. This is okay. a definitely uh, a great dance track as well, and, and great vocals by Angelique, and it's Hollywood from Angelique's self-titled CD, which is available. Uh, you can go to angeliquemusic.com. Yes. And your website. You can also order it from cdbaby.com. Yes. And uh, we'll talk more about her independent release and uh, play some more of the music here. Right here on The Upper Room, Angelique is my guest. Here's Hollywood. And that was Hollywood from Angelique. And her CD is available, as we mentioned before, from CDBaby.com. As an independent artist, um, you know, you have a great record and you want to get it out. And, of course, you want it to sell and people know about it. Um, You don't want it to, like a lot of releases, not just independent, but big releases sometimes go to the wayside depend. 
uh, even though they're great releases. What What's the preparation and the decisions in getting it out there? Well, I, what's really been helpful to me was CD Baby mm-hmm. because they, they offered many, many tips. And I have to tell you, when I, when I first started this project, I thought it would be a process where I did a I did a demo and I would I went to Midem in mm-hmm. France right. and I thought automatically I would have a deal and when that didn't happen I said well I don't want to sit on this project I'm going to um, I'm going to try to release it myself but I really really went in blindly and but with the help of uh, CD Baby and um, many of the uh, independent type organizations um, I was able to uh, to put the record together and come up with a with a marketing plan and uh, do consignments okay. and I did consignments and I have a um, on my website I have a um, a fan club okay and my fan club actually I call them Angelique Angels right and what they do is they act as a street team for me yeah I saw that there's a link on for yeah. different things like that right yeah. right right and so my street team actually goes out and hits the stores and calls the radio stations and tries to get them to play my record and, and place my record in the stores um, and so people actually the record stores actually contact me and say we've been getting requests for your record and we'd like to uh, to service it so I've been able to get a few consignments with that too oh that's great yeah, yeah. So it's been really great and uh, the word is definitely getting out and, and you're currently on a uh, east coast tour yes yeah. I am all the way from California and and you pick the, uh, the the hottest time of the year to travel. So, but <laughs> yeah, but, but how, how's it been going so far? The the uh, the trek all the way up the east coast. It's really been great. As mm-hmm. I as I've said uh, in the past, the uh, the people all over have been so very kind and so helpful that it's made the trek much much easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. And uh, also, um, you're talking about your band. Hopefully coming back here at some point. Definitely. Uh, we'll be back. How, how about when you choose your band and putting it together for, for your music? What, what do you usually look for putting a band together? Musicians and... Well, the musicians that I have chosen, they're musicians that I've known for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're, they're at a point in their careers where they wanted to try something new. I've been really, really fortunate because most of them work with big big artists and okay. yeah and so they're they're taking a chance with me working with me because they really believe in the music and I've been really blessed with them yeah who plays bass on the record that's what I wanted to ask <laughs> Jimmy Taylor okay yeah yeah Jimmy Taylor is uh, a gentleman who was in uh, Grand Central Station Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was a guitarist for Grand Central Station, so he actually. That's right. Bass. Yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah. yeah. He played bass and guitar. On wow. The, uh, Hello, this is Angelique, and you're listening to the Upper Room with Joe Kelly on the CD, as well as um, our um, the uh, bassist that I use for our live shows. His name is Hiroshi Sakita. Okay. Yeah. So your band is definitely going to be smoking, right? Yeah. Oh, they're smoking. Yeah. <laughs> we, we give a great show. Right. Yeah, we do. Uh, how's, uh, as far as radio airplay and as an independent artist, um, mm-hmm. talk about what's been working and, and what you maybe you feel needs to be changed for, for well, artists? Well, I think as an independent artist, it's so very difficult. Everything, everything right. is is difficult for us because we don't have we don't have the uh, the budgets mm-hmm. that a that a major artist or even a an artist that's signed to a to a smaller label has. We don't have the budget, so we we run up against that on a regular basis. Um, it's difficult to say, but there are situations where. Uh, radio stations want more than just good music yeah i know <laughs> i used to work in commercial radio too but um i didn't run into that back then you know yeah <laughs> i guess i wasn't lucky enough but but you know i think it's just so much more you know fulfilling the way you can have success absolutely going the true route of things like that absolutely so, yeah well what i really like about it is 
I'm pleased that people that when people play the music, they're playing the music because they like the music. Right. And it's not it's not because of a budget. It's not because they're saying if you don't play this, if you don't play this new artist, I'm not going to give you access to the latest CD for this. You know, for the other big artists, they're playing right. the music because they believe in mm-hmm. it. And right. to me, that's more important. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And and no money has switched our hands. No, right? no money has switched <laughs> our hands. So uh, hey, listen. Um, we are going to let our audience listen to another great uh, selection off Angelique CD. And you have great taste in cover versions because I'm a big Beatles fan Are as you really? well. So <laughs> uh, you chose the Lennon McCartney track, All I Gotta Do. Yes. Um, does this come from when you were growing up listening to music? Or well, actually, how'd you decide on this one? Actually, um, this was a, a song that uh, Albert Bulkava had arranged okay and when we were working on bay or when i was actually working on the uh, the cd he's and i was looking for songs he said angie why don't you sing he calls me angie why don't you um do a cover of all i gotta do i had never heard the song before okay i i, I really wasn't familiar with any right. of the Beatles tunes. <laughs> but, so, but hey you did a great job you know yeah. yeah so we did it and it it was great and then i i heard the original version okay. of all i gotta do after and, and you I flipped could, it up right? you flipped it up and you sung it a difference totally <laughs> yeah, different it's completely yeah. different yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what i like about it mm-hmm. um you did something which is you know right to me it's you know classic and you did just a great job and added to it yeah yeah i i really really like that version very cool so we're going to listen to it right now this is from angelique cd a girl singer production and uh go to her website right now while you're listening to the program angelique music.com and there's uh ways people can contact you and also your street team people get involved and most importantly to uh pick up the cd and it's available at cdbaby.com. We'll talk with Angelique in just a few moments, but here's all I gotta do. And that was another great song off Angelique's CD, which is uh, her self titled CD, and just came out this year, earlier in the year. And uh, we've been playing tracks here on the Upper Room with Joe Kelly, just moving through the record. And uh, how how is it uh, the response? You know, you primarily have jazz r&b and right. a little bit of funk in there right but when you go through the the you know out of left field some of the, the tracks are people that you know accepting to that or you yeah. know they really are that, that's cool yeah i thought that it, it that was one reason that i wanted to do an independent cd because i wanted to put on it what i wanted to put on right. it mm-hmm. you know and i wanted to have full creative c- control and i i was i told myself I don't care what the program directors say, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. But if it's right, it's cool. Oh, yeah. And and the people have loved it. They they really have loved it. And they've embraced it. So, How, how about as a singer, um, style-wise, to sing different kinds of style? What, what does it take? Are there specific things? For, for instance, like a, the Latin song, the Bossa Nova song. Mm-hmm. Anything you do differently with your voice? Is it or just no. just a different vibe? I think it's just a different vibe. I mean, singing is singing, mm-hmm. you know, and um, that's what I did. Okay. I just sung. Yeah. We we should get into uh, some of your background and how you got into music. I know it's it sounds like a really diverse household growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was really diverse. Um, We're talking Stevie Wonder and Edith right. Piaf, right? Right, yeah. right, right, right. Well, I studied French and Spanish in college. Okay. And that's how I got really, really interested. And actually, I started Spanish when I was about 10 years old. And uh, so I've always really loved different cultures. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I got interested in the different music. Okay. You know, the uh, the French and the Spanish music. And then my, my, my dad used to, he used to make me sit down every Saturday night when everybody else would be out partying and having a good time right. to listen to jazz like okay. Bobby Humphrey. And I'm like, oh, come <laughs> on, give me a break. Everybody else is outside, you right. know, yeah. doing the penguin. Right. <laughs> I'm sitting here right. listening to Bobby Humphrey. And, um, and then my sister was really into uh, Carlos Santana. Okay. She mm-hmm. was into Santana and The Who and, and people like that, and The Beatles. Okay. And uh, so I got to listen to some of that. And then I had a neighbor who was a junk man. Okay. And he used to collect all these really, really bizarre albums. And I would listen to them. I was open to anything. And so 
I started listening to Josephine Baker and Billie Holiday and dressing like Josephine Baker okay. and Billie Holiday with the flowers, <laughs> with yeah. the flowers in right. my hair when I was when I was about 12 years old and so okay. <laughs> when I was a very strange <laughs> child. <laughs> Uh, how about today? Um, do you buy a lot of music? I do. Uh huh. I buy a lot of music. I I really like um, uh, Alejandro Sanz. Okay. I I think he's a fabulous artist. I also like um, Angelique Kijo. I think she's got well, some really yeah. really interesting things going on, and uh, some of the newer artists, India Ari. I think she's phenomenal, mm -hmm. absolutely phenomenal, and I adore Stevie Wonder. He's the first person I ever saw in concert, him oh. and uh, Gil Scott Heron. Oh, I, I, yeah. I adore him. I think right. he's wonderful. He's a wonderful writer and a wonderful artist. Yeah. So if you, now this is probably not a fair question, but <laughs> if Stevie Wonder said, I want to record a duet on, on your next record, um, do you have some songs in mind you'd, you'd love to work in the studio with Stevie? You know, I'm actually working on a song right now that would mm -hmm. be perfect for Mr. Stevie Wonder and myself. Right. So, Mr. Stevie Wonder, if you're listening, <laughs> call me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do have a song in mind that I think would be really good uh, for he and I. It's called um, I'm In Love With You. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, hey, I believe he's out your way, so. Yes, yeah. he is. Yes, so, he is. Uh, who knows? Could happen, right? That's right. That, that would be great if it. That'd be yeah. fabulous. Um, how about instruments yourself do you, do you write on on the instruments yeah. I, write, I write on piano okay yeah and do you find that uh the the best way uh for for songs well you know yeah. it's interesting because how i initially start a song is oftentimes my best songs have been songs that i have i've dreamed the melodies oh okay and so i keep a tape recorder next to my bed Mm -hmm. And I've trained myself when I hear a melody in my head to wake up right, and record right. it. So sometimes if I'm if I'm away from home, in fact, I've been away from home for about two weeks now, mm -hmm. and I've thought of a couple of melodies, and so I've been calling my home, leaving messages on okay. my voicemail, so I wouldn't forget the melodies. But um, so I start with that. I oftentimes start with that, and then I'll write it out, and um, then I'll go into my little home studio. Okay, and. Uh, begin the uh, the basic foundational tracks and from there i um i dump those tracks at a, at a you know a larger studio and so, i add my musicians and overdub so do they usually sound a lot different than what you're going to have when you return home on on the uh answer machine <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right right yeah, they do stuff off of here from from the initial yes answer machine yeah absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely um i'm in love with you mm-hmm Okay. I'm in love with you was was one of, was a song that I that I dreamt, and uh, it started out with just a very very basic uh, chorus, and from the chorus I built the song. Yeah. So uh, Angelique, I think we're going to get into uh, another song since we're talking about I'm in love with you. Okay. And uh, you wrote this as well, and uh, recorded with some great musicians, and this fantastic CD is available. For uh, your collection right now, definitely a must for, for any music lover's collection. And you can go to cdbaby.com or just uh, head on over to angeliquemusic.com and it'll be there and you respond to people's email and um, when you get home, yeah. you'll be in contact with all those people, right? Absolutely. Right. So this is uh, Angelique. I'm in love with you off her CD called Angelique. This is The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. Okay, that's another great song off Angelique's CD. Wonderful singer, songwriter, and uh, she's a musician as well. And uh, this CD, um, we've been playing it since it uh, came out. We got in contact with you, and uh, yes. nobody's telling us which tracks to play. Right. So. <laughs> which is great. Yeah, and, and the, the way you record is that uh, it's, it's definitely your own spirit and everything into it. Absolutely. Um, how about traveling on the road, uh, th this trip out here? Mm -hmm. I, I know you mentioned going into radio stations. and Right. Um, okay, I'll put you on the spot. Traveling around, radio or CDs? W what have you been listening to in the car when you're driving around or traveling? When I've been traveling around in the car, I have been listening to Stevie Wonder. Okay. Uh, George Benson. And... Eric Benet. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Those so are the some some good places. artists there. Yeah. yeah I saw uh, George Benson two years ago in Montreal at the Jazz Festival. And I bet it was phenomenal, huh? Yeah, it was great. Yeah. 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 Just just a great show, and he's enjoying the stage. Yeah. 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 Great artist. I like him. If you if you had to put a a band together, you had uh, let's see two weeks of free studio time. Ooh. Um, you have some folks you'd like to bring in without slighting the folks you've already worked with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because well, I'm sure they'll understand, right? <laughs> right, because my musicians they're they're the bomb. Right. They're 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 pretty yeah, tough. <laughs> we'll get that out in the front right away. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a disclaimer, guys. Right. Um. Let's see. I would work with. Let's see. I would really like to work with Nathan East. Okay. He's he's phenomenal. Greg Fillingaines, I think he's a, he's a phenomenal keyboard player. Do they still call him the mouse? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd actually like him and Michael Boddicker. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. like Michael Boddicker. He's he's pretty cool too. Um, I'd also like Ooh, I, I might have like two of everything because cause I, I wouldn't mind having George Benson play some guitar. Sure. I could I could work with him. And, well, uh, here's the plan. On, on down to Philadelphia, uh, I think he lives in New Jersey. So. Oh, I'll have to go knock yeah. on that right, man's right, door. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. On drums, ooh, I think that my drummer, I, I have yet to meet a drummer as... And I, and I know, I know there are some out there, but but my drummer is pretty good. His mm-hmm. name is Jeffrey Suttles. I think he is phenomenal. I'd like to use him. I know him. You know him. I don't know him well, mm-hmm. but I I saw him march uh, at Foxwoods. Okay. He he was uh, playing a gig over there. So was he with Taylor? Do you know? No, or no. Tina Marie. Yeah, I know he plays with Tina Marie. Yeah, he was yeah. with Tina Marie. Right. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah, he he was playing drums and yeah, yeah. I saw him in the lobby there. So he, he's yeah. a cool guy. He's a yeah. cool guy, right? And, and he's a great drummer, right? He, he's yeah. a really really great drummer. So I I think I'd keep him, right? <laughs> so how, how about uh, do you have live horns or you you just stick with the keyboards with the with your band? If if I had, if I was able to, I would love to have the Tower of Power horns. Wow, yeah, yeah I'd love to. I I heard them with a Phil Collins a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Wow! Right! Wow! Fantastic! Right? Yeah. 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 I might use him on drums. He might okay. be okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, well, you've been out in L.A. How long? Just I've been in L.A. for over over five years. Okay. Yeah. I'm so, originally, so you're originally from? I'm originally from Northern California. Okay. Yeah. So so being out there, mm-hmm. it, there's so many great musicians and singers. And, yes, there are. Um, is it frustrating at times? Or you you just you, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. it's it's frustrating, but you can't you can't let the next person who's going to be prettier, who's going to be right. you know better, you know for whatever combination of reasons, you have to stay focused and do what you came on this planet to do. Sure, you yeah. know, and as as long as as you stay focused and and don't let other people's successes and or failures get you down you'll be all right yeah and, and the big success right now is your self-titled cd angelique and, and great photos on there as well thank as your you. website thank you and and the cd i'm i'm a sucker for liner notes you know <laughs> i love you know i love to dig deep into the liner notes and mm-hmm. um you worked with uh yourself on this or you have some other folks working on the the cd the, the packaging inside um actually a, a lot of the artwork i i did myself mm-hmm. um i have a um a terrific photographer and uh, her name is tamar chaifetz okay and uh she she actually suggested using a sepia tone and i was like well i'm not really familiar with that i don't know how that's going to work and so she said just trust me let me take the pictures and okay. if you don't like them <laughs> we'll do something else and so she took the pictures, and I was like, wow, that's really cool. I never would have right. thought of that. And I think that it works really well with the vibe of the CD. Yeah, I, I think it's just yeah. it's just a great package in, yeah. in there. And yeah, she did a nice job. So you have everybody covered in the thank yous? Oh, <laughs> yeah. definitely. The yeah. photographer, right. the makeup person, the hair person, no, the Nobody musicians. called you up and said, 
How come I'm not on there? <laughs> well, um, I do have a line on there that says that uh, to all the people that I have forgotten who right. are nice, please forgive me. And to those right. who I meant to forget, right. and you know who you are, you right. are the weakest link. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah. 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 So so uh, we should uh, get into another track. We, we uh, gave you a little preview on what, what this is about. This is Bossa Nova Hotel. Mm. And um, how, how did you work with this in the studio and um, creating this one? Well, this one was really, really interesting because um, when I started the song, it was it was at a completely different direction than mm-hmm. it than it wound up being. Um, but I had uh, I had listened to something on the radio, or it was a news newscast, and they were talking about brothels and things right. like that. Mm-hmm. And actually, it was the um, in Nevada. You know that they have a legal line. They have I think, a legal yeah, Reno or somewhere. There. Reno or yeah. Anyway, right. So I I I was thinking about that. and I said, oh wow, you know, this song would actually work much better mm-hmm. if if I start talking about this this place, right? Uh huh. Then then what I was thinking of was love and right. all that kind of <laughs> stuff. I said, no, that's not going to work for this song. Let me let me do this. And uh, so then when I actually. Um, started writing the song the words came so easily they mm-hmm. came so very easily as well as the melody and then when when i went in to record it and um jimmy was there okay my guitar mm-hmm. player and he said angie what in the world were you thinking you're this sweet little innocent person and i was like well jimmy <laughs> <laughs> you don't know all about me do you now darling <laughs> So you had had to instill a little tawdriness into it, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Right. And, and yeah. it's a great, great uh, yeah. detour on the album, and it's a great song. So we're going to listen to it right now from Angelique. And uh, go to angeliquemusic.com right now, and we'll come back and talk a little more with Angelique. Okay, we are back here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly, and Angelique is my special guest. I want to thank you for, for stopping by all the way from California. I know it. Yeah, I'm really appreciative of that. Thank you for having me, Joe. I really, really appreciate all your support. You've been terrific. And, and the support will continue to be there because uh, it's it's a great release, and you know. Thank you, Joe. You know, we we've played Hollywood. I think we got into Hollywood first, but mm-hmm. we've been going through the CD and, and playing tracks off of that. Who knows? Next week it'll be something else. So <laughs> great. Um, you have this current. Uh, tour of the east coast here and stopping by radio stations and you're also tomorrow you're performing people listen right now this may be past uh you know happenings but uh philadelphia yeah yeah what's happening in philadelphia i'm going to be doing a live show at Mm -hmm. rock station okay and um that's uh tomorrow friday okay and then on saturday i'll be in washington dc at ashanti land doing a live show so is your musicians from California coming out? Yeah. Oh, that should be nice. Yeah. 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 How, how are rehearsals going? How, working rehearsals, how tough are you getting it right? I'm pretty, I'm pretty demanding. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm pretty demanding. But I think that uh, as a woman especially, mm-hmm. once I've established the rules and everybody knows what the rules are and they're comfortable with the rules, things go smoothly okay. because they know what I expect out of them. Right. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, you go into most songs off the CD? You, you go? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, we do most of the songs and a couple of songs that will go on the next CD. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, your CD is all different music styles and yeah. we talked about your, your background. Right. Also, um, acting. Mm-hmm. You know, plenty plenty of experience and you've been on uh, some some great programs. How, right. You know, we should just make mention you were on Fame from yeah. way back? Yeah, yeah well, yeah. it's from way back when, when I was uh, 15. Okay. When I was 15 years old, I actually snuck on the set. <laughs> <laughs> I snuck on the set and uh, with some other mu- musicians that were auditioning. And uh, Debbie Allen took one look at me, and she whispered to the casting director. And I, I, so uh-huh. I came up there like I knew what I was doing. Didn't have a clue. And uh, she, she gave me a shot. She gave me a shot. So I was actually able to play. I played keyboards oh, on the okay. show for, for a couple of... Um, uh, shows it was great and uh that that was in the 80s that, that was in the 80s yeah the 80s I, yeah I, yeah i remember i was i was talking to uh, some of my buddies younger guys uh-huh. and i was saying do you remember fame 
and uh, no, no, like, no. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got to school them a little bit. That's right. <laughs> yeah, right. How, how about present act, acting? Um, you've been working on some projects. Well, actually, I really tried to concentrate on on the CD okay. and the uh, the promotion and the touring and the live shows has kept me pretty busy doing that. But I'm always yeah. looking, so right. if there are casting directors out there, you can call me, and too. That's right. <laughs> and she's a beautiful and talented lady, and you, by uh, going to her website, you can contact Angelique. So uh, how about when you, you're not act, not acting or, or in music, what do you like to do? I love, I'm a handy person. Okay. So I love to do a lot of work around my house. Okay. And uh, I bought a fixer-upper, and so I do a lot of work around the house. Um, I love to hike. There are a lot of mountains near where I live so I do a lot of hiking in the mountains and at the beach Mm -hmm. love to bike ride I take belly dancing lessons so yeah you do a lot of stuff yeah yeah I'm pretty active and it's a beautiful place out there right it's a beautiful place yeah Mm -hmm. yeah how about the east coast um I mean you've toured all around the world yeah um how about in the states some venues that you'd love to to play and and bring your band as well I would love to do the um the Hollywood Bowl. Mm-hmm. I'd love to do the Hollywood Bowl. I'd love to do Radio City, of course. Um, I'd love to do the Forum in Los Angeles. Um, I'd love to do something in, in Japan. Oh, okay, yeah. That's been really interesting. Um, I didn't think that I would get the kind of um, response, positive responses that I've gotten f- um, from Japan that I have. I've sure. sold a lot of CDs there. Been really, really pleased with that. So I'd like to I'd right. like to do a live show for all those people who have supported me. Uh, we're talking about uh, Asia, mm-hmm. th- those long flights, right? Uh, Whoa! I used to fly from New York to to Taiwan. Oh, and no, I think no. we we stopped in Japan a few times, but yeah. whoa. That's rough. Yeah. It's really, really rough. And that's part of the reason my dad, I think, moved out to L.A. <laughs> to cut the travel time in half. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was so funny. The um, When I uh, was in Japan, I was there for four months, and when I got on the plane and I sat down and the, uh, the flight attendant said to me, you... You Angelique, <laughs> I know you. I see your show. I said, really? Oh, she that, knew who I was. I was like, right. that's fabulous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Well, you're a great artist, and and uh, your spirit's great, and and thank you. Continue, Jeff. you know, you're having your. Uh, you must be songwriting all the time, whenever the inspiration is there, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I probably have about a hundred songs. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. That I have that I have in my library. So this is going to be a, a busy rest of the year for you, right? Yeah. I hope so. Right, right. I truly hope so, yeah. And, and where people can find Angelique CD, she's an independent artist, and we always stress on the upper room to support independent music and uh, local music as well. Um, you can go to angeliquemusic.com, and also you can go to cdbaby.com. And right now while you're listening to the show, there is a link right on the web page with Angelique's picture you can click on it and take you right to the spot Angelique's website so there's there's no excuses <laughs> that's right. right that's right how about audition left at the end right um <laughs> Oh, it's a, it's a great end end <laughs> for it. And I, I like the little sidebars like that. So, right. Um, w- what was your thinking behind that? Well, what happened was I I brought a friend in who had uh, really wanted to try her hand at singing, studio okay. singing. She had never done studio singing before, and uh, so we were rehearsing the parts that I wanted her to uh, to sing, and she was really really nervous. And so she was doing the we were doing the parts over and over again. So finally. Um, she almost did it right. Yeah, I thought right. it was really funny. In fact, she hasn't heard that yet. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hope she won't ask for too much money off right. it, right? A That's cut. right. Yeah. That's right, yeah. So Angelique has been my special guest, and she is uh, currently on tour here on the East Coast and uh, New York City. You hit New York City. Yes. And uh, what was it like um, going to New York City? Is this first time back? In a while? Yeah, I haven't been uh, in, to New York since 9-11. Right. Mm-hmm. So this was my first experience there, and I was I was nervous about traveling. Right. I was nervous mm-hmm. about traveling there. and um, but, but I'm so happy that I made the trek. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, really happy I made the trek. It, it's, it was 
well worth it, I believe. Right. Yeah. And, and I think yeah. I've had New York City musicians in the studio here, and they mm-hmm. mention people have left town, but these musicians stay. and said, you know, yeah. this is a great time to... Yeah. To to work on music and, and just turn things around that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, I think that we have to remember that we have to continue and mm-hmm. that if we run and we hide, yeah. the enemy wins. Yeah. So, so I'm glad you made the trip. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Truly. And uh, you will be in Philadelphia on Friday tomorrow. Yes. Um, and also Washington, D.C. And then back to the fun and sun down in Florida? Back to the fun and sun in Florida. I'll be doing some in stores and some radio interviews there as well. And then I'll be back to California. Okay. Yeah. And uh, say hi to everybody in the band. I, I wish I could be down there and see a great show. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to have you down. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to make it out to California myself because, my, you know, my family keeps bugging me to yeah. come on out there. So, yeah. Yeah, do that for sure. Let's see. We're going to get into uh, Creepin', mm. another song you wrote right there. and mm-hmm. um, Another great track. Kind of that mid-tempo feel, right? Right, yeah. right. How, how did you write this one and, and uh, work with uh, you musicians on this? Well, actually, this is all vocal. Okay. This is all vocal. And what I did was I sampled different voices. Mm-hmm. And uh, because I wanted to create a a vocal orchestra right, so to sure. speak and uh so it started with that concept i knew exactly what i wanted to do and uh because this was um this was a few years after bobby mcmaren had did the don't worry be happy right thing mm-hmm. and i said that's a really interesting concept i'm going to try it myself and uh so i did and i included my french which i right, love yeah. i love french and uh i thought that it was a very sensual type song mm-hmm. and but it, so it was sensual but it was all vocal. And right. uh, yeah, it was fun. And we're going to listen to it right now. How many tracks on this vocals? Do you remember? Oh my gosh, there's probably 24, 27, wow. 28 Whoa. vocal tracks. Yeah. So a lot of work into it this one. It was a one. lot yeah. of work. Yeah. Was this one of the first ones you did? or? Last? Yeah, that was yeah. one of the first songs that I did mm-hmm. because that one took the longest. Okay. Yeah. So keep us posted on the on the new record and uh folks, once again you can uh, click on the website right here and uh head on over to Angelique's website, angeliquemusic.com or go to cdbaby.com. Thanks Angelique so much. Thank you. And uh we'll hope to see you perform live. I know I know you're a great singer and great performer, so. Thank yeah. you, Joe. This is Creepin' from Angelique Hello, this is Angelique, and you're listening to The Upper Room with Joe Kelly at 88.5 WVOF Fairfield, Connecticut. 